Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Global News is reporting on the release of an alarming climate report entitled Alberta's Climate Future. The report was authored by Professor Catherine Hayhoe and a colleague, and it is alarming, but not something Albertans should take seriously. I say that because climate policy analyst Roger Pielke Jr. has recently published several articles about the inappropriate use of a projected scenario known as RCP 8.5. He calls this climate porn because this is a future projection of a world that uses seven times the amount of coal that we use today and that incorporates no climate mitigation policies. In short, the use of RCP 8.5 is completely divorced from present reality and future likelihood, but it certainly provides scary results. And that's what we see throughout Hayhoe's Alberta's Climate Future Report. Repeated use of the RCP 8.5 scenario as the basis for future projections. She also compares the extreme RCP 8.5 scenario with the RCP 4.5 scenario, but Roger Pielke Jr. has pointed out that these scenarios were not meant to be compared in this way. Many experts in the field of climate modeling have repeatedly said that climate models are useful for understanding climate, but useless for predicting climate. Physicist Freeman Dyson said this in an interview with filmmaker Marine Pools. Climate modeler Mototaka Nakamura published a book in which he said of climate models, our models are Mickey Mouse mockeries of the real world. Climate scientist Hans von Stoch, in an interview with Marine Pools, he noted that climate change is just one of many societal issues, and likely not the most important one. Canadian Christopher Essex, professor of applied mathematics and co-author of Taken by Storm, has said that to do an accurate forecast for only 10 years out would take computing time that's the age of the universe squared. So Professor Hayhoe appears to be quite misinformed about global emissions. At the University of Calgary in March 2018, she told people that global emissions were reducing due to China's installation of renewables. Starting now to curve off the higher scenario. If you notice here that we're almost here, we're just starting to curve off the higher scenario. When I say we, I actually mean it's mostly, get this, it's mostly due to China. China has more wind and solar energy than any other country in the world. And you know, I'm not 100% confident in their emission estimates, so take this with a bit of a grain of salt. But at least what we're working with at the global level suggests that we're starting to peel off the higher scenario, but not fast enough to get down to a lower scenario or meet the Paris targets. So that's ridiculous. China emits more in one month than Canada does all year. Professor Hayhoe's report refers to the 2013 Calgary flood, suggesting that such flooding is a function of human-caused climate change. She projects such heavy precipitation events will get worse in future. But in fact, eight of the worst floods in Calgary's history occurred before 1933. And the Weather Network has an excellent explanation of the known but rare meteorological conditions that led to the 2013 Calgary flood. Nothing to do with climate change. So, yes, low-lying regions should enact adaptations like berms and dams to protect against flooding. But spend the money on that, not on climate change policies to reduce carbon dioxide. And I say that because since the IPC's 2013 report, it has been clear that carbon dioxide is not the control knob that can fine-tune climate. Despite a significant rise in carbon dioxide, the IPCC 2013 report stated there had been a hiatus in global warming since before Kyoto was ratified. And Kyoto was an early version of the present Paris Agreement.
the Alberta Climate Future Report, aside from its many alarming predictions, also states that more extreme weather events like floods and wildfires will abound and will cost more money, making reference to insurance bureau statements. Roger Pielke Jr. has done climate disaster and insurance cost assessments for 25 years and he found there's no increase in extreme events and that when properly calculated, no increase in costs. It's just that, as on the Calgary floodplain, today we have multi-million dollar infrastructures where once we had simple wooden houses. Indeed, CBC was forced to correct such insurance bureau claims as Robert Muir, professional engineer, showed that urbanization is more responsible for urban flooding not increases in precipitation. Likewise, though the Hayho report refers to the Fort McMurray wildfire as an example of future disasters, in 1950, the Chinchanga wildfire burned up 3.4 million acres of forest in northern BC and Alberta, and the smoke pall was seen around the world. People thought the apocalypse had arrived. So the point is, wildfires and floods will always be with us. There's no evidence they're increasing due to human influence or carbon dioxide, according to the 2012 IPCC report on extreme weather. Our scientific advisor, Dr. Kandekar, is a 40-year veteran research scientist of Environment Canada. In his 2018 presentation for Friends of Science Society, he showed that extreme weather events are just integral to climate, a fact of life. So we should prepare for them and not be scared of them. Dr. Kandekar was commissioned by the Alberta government in 2000 to evaluate the scientific basis of the greenhouse gas climate change theory, and he found there to be many uncertainties then. And when I interviewed him in 2018, he said there are many more uncertainties today Climate and weather events have freaked people out throughout human history because we are small and vulnerable in the face of powerful natural forces. Climate reports, like Alberta's climate future, based on the most extreme scenario, cast with alarming projections 100 years out, will likely end up diverting money from necessary berms and dams or fire breaks that would protect us, diverting money to useless climate projects like wind and solar farms that actually cause some warming rather than reducing it. So Robert Lyman has written a new report, When Climate Prophecy Fails, showing that the evidence does not support the climate catastrophe predictions of the past 30 years. Why would we believe them for the next 100? Climate will always change. Prepare. Don't be scared. If you appreciate the work that we do, bringing open civil debate to climate and energy policies, please donate $10 or, or more and help us bring the climate conversation back down to earth. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.